The challenge of developing sustainable harvest strategies requires an understanding of many important and interrelated pieces of information. For example, if we were considering harvest strategies for moose, we would need to know how large the population is, the number of calves born each year, and recognize that only some of the calves born would survive to yearlings. We would need to know the number of yearlings surviving to young adults, and in turn this would influence the number of animals that may be available as an annual supply for harvesting. However, from a management perspective, determining sustainable harvest represents only half of the solution. The other half of the issue lies in achieving appropriate sharing of the harvest among different user groups. But if the demand for a wildlife resource exceeds supply, and if there is a conservation concern, a harvest may be allocated to give priority to the subsistence needs of Yukon First Nations while providing for the reasonable needs of other harvesters. It is also important to account for other human caused mortalities such as poaching and human wildlife conflicts. The point here is that a population needs to be resilient to the total mortality imposed upon it, not just those associated with acceptable harvesting activities. These other non-harvest related mortality sources can become very important to overall harvest sustainability in populations that occur at l relatively low density, such as grizzly bears. In these next two slides, we return to the general theme of population variability and its implications to overall harvest rates. Let's consider a hypothetical population where the habitat can support around a thousand animals. If we assume that environmental conditions associated with climate and landscape are relatively constant and stable, we would expect that the population would also exhibit relatively small changes in abundance from one year to the next. Notice that the green band showing the range of variation is relatively narrow. If we want to achieve a constant harvest from populations with low variability, we can often set the harvest rate at a fairly high rate, shown here at 8 to 12 percent. Because in any given year, at the prescribed rate, the population is large enough to sustain the harvest. In comparison, a population with high variability shows much broader swings in numbers over time. The range of variation is much wider, as shown by the broad green band. The risk with highly variable populations is that if we assume that the population is constant and use the same relatively high harvest rate, when the population declines to its lower range due to natural mortality, our harvest mortality will increase the total mortality on the population and may cause the population to decline much lower than its range of natural variability. Thus, in populations with high year-to-year -year variability, which is a general characteristic of many northern wildlife populations, a conservative strategy is to apply a lower overall rate of harvest to minimize the risk of overharvest during years when animal abundance is naturally low. Thank you for your continued interest. Please join me in the next video where we will explore the implications of adult sex ratio and how it can influence productivity in a wildlife population.